Okay guys, today we're going to be taking a look at the Topps Brothers of Bushcraft or B.O.B. Fieldcraft. Now unfortunately we are relegated to the truck because the wind is whipping out there like an absolute savage. So um, instead of trying to battle the wind to hopefully help you guys hear me, I just decided let's move into the truck. Future. Just reminding you that if you want to see more Alaskan gun, EDC, survival, and bushcraft content, make sure that you hit that subscribe button, ring the notification bell, and of course leave a comment and a like while you're at it. it I'm titling this video the best knife that you've probably forgotten about and uh, there's definitely people who have not forgotten about the Topps Fieldcraft but I think that this is a knife that has kind of flown under the radar and almost has kind of become forgotten about in the bushcrafting community and I think that's a shame because you know I have so many knives that sometimes I forget about certain knives and in, in fairness unfortunately I did forget about this knife but the other day I was going through the knife box and I remember this knife and I'm like man that was such a great knife I've had so many good experiences with this blade and really when I first started using this knife I was kind of new to bushcrafting and this was my first real like serious bushcrafting knife and for that purpose and for that task it actually did a really good job and I've been you know comparing this knife to quite a few of my current or more recent uh, bushcrafting knife acquisitions or at least more newer than this I've had this thing forever so it doesn't take much for that but you know this knife has really been a fantastic knife and I can see why uh, the company Tops, you know they produce many different designs and produce a lot of different knives but this knife has for the past seven years been in their inventory of knives and once again picking it back up using this blade reminds me why this knife is probably still in their inventory of knives currently being made and it also reminds me why the blade price has never really changed on this knife like a lot of knives you know when they're new they're priced really high and you know the price kind of lowers as it goes on whereas the tops fieldcraft it was never per priced particularly high, but it's always been about $100 to $120. You know, sometimes you might get on a sale for $90, or you know you might get some special discount, but by and large, you're going to find this knife for about $120, and that's just the going price, you know, regardless to the handle variation or you know the blade finish. And actually, Topps has made many different variants of this knife with G10, Micarta, you know, satin blades, actually 154 CM for a stainless steel option and you know they've really made this knife into many different things and I think the reason why they've kept this knife around and why they've made those different variants is just because this knife performs very well and what I mean by that is that it, the magic of this the ergonomics of this blade is I'm not sure how they got it but it just feels so right and so good in the hand whether you're holding this knife for 10 minutes 20 minutes two hours you know this blade is just it doesn't have hot spots minus of course the stupid jimping but minus the jimping this blade just does not have any hot spots and it feels comfortable whether you're holding it in reverse or you know whether you're holding it reversed or forward you know whether you're holding it like this like this or using like a chest lever, you know, it just feels good in the hand. And so this knife is very hard to beat for that reason. I think the second reason this knife is so good is it's modified Scandi grind. Now, factory, it comes with a Scandi Vex, which is a convex and a Scandinavian grind, but more than just making a Scandi Vex, because you can make a Scandi Vex wrong and it still be a really garbage knife. But with the Topps Fieldcraft, they made this blade really or they made the grind really long. In fact, this is out of all the different Scandi knives I've used, which I've owned and own currently. I've owned, I own currently, and you know, continue to buy Scandinavian ground knives. But out of all of the ones I've had and have, this has the largest Scandinavian grind. So from start to blade, you know, this one has one of the longest reaching Scandinavian grinds and that really I think makes a large difference with this blade because when you have such a long grind it allows you to have a very very thin edge not necessarily a weak edge but it allows you to have a nice thin edge without much material behind it and that Scandivex only further helps because when you have a Scandinavian grind you know it's just a straight flat grind but when you have a you know Scandivex it kind of rolls that edge in a little bit more so there's even less 
uh, steel at the very cutting edge. And so those two kind of ways that it's ground, or the, the fact that it's a long, tapered Scandinavian grind and it's a Scandi Vax, really make for this blade having a very very thin cutting edge, and that really makes a difference, believe it or not, when you're working on fine task skills, and you know, when you're trying to carve into wood, having a very thin edge that's still robust and still strong makes a huge difference. So, I have to say this blade, you know, if you haven't heard of the Topps Fieldcraft or the Brothers of Bushcraft Fieldcraft, the Brothers of Bushcraft Fieldcraft knife or B.O.B. Fieldcraft, whatever you want to call it, goes by a million different names. Uh, I would definitely recommend checking out this knife if you haven't heard of it. And if you have heard of it and you still haven't got one in the past seven years, I would recommend picking one up because at the price point that they're at, like I said, anywhere from about $100 to $120, there's really no excuse not to pick one of these guys up, especially when you think that, you know, knives like the Mora Garber go for about, you know, $120 to $90. You know, they run in the same price range, but I think that, you know, by and large, this knife is a lot better than the Topps, or sorry, the Mora Garberg, and granted, the Mora Garberg does have a little bit better ability in striking ferro rods, but this knife has a lot of nice options to it, and, you know, it really is a good performing blade, especially for the price point. So, just wanted to create this video kind of as a seven-year kind of retrospective and a video that if you haven't seen this knife, if you haven't encountered it, because there are a lot of new bushcrafters that probably weren't around in 2013 when the Fieldcraft first came out. You know, if you haven't encountered this knife, you might want to give it, uh, you know, a look. You might want to check it out. You might want to see what it's about and uh, see if it's your style. And I think it's a really good knife for the price. So that's basically all I have to say about the Topps Fieldcraft. It is a really nice knife. I would highly recommend not forgetting about it, and I would highly recommend checking it out if you haven't already. As always, guys, God bless, and I'm out.